Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike the Fantasy Hitman, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, Wednesday edition. Always a lot going on to talk about, and today is no exception. More wide receivers on the move in the NFL, so we'll yeah talk about that on today's show. I know we're all sitting here waiting for waivers to go through in our league of record. And all of you out there listening, it was waiver day. And it's a good time to remind you to drop it like it's hot because we've got, you know, players that are going to hit the waiver wire today because you got to make choices, got to make decisions. There are players to be dropped. It looks like the most fab was spent on Jalen McMillan in our league guilty in, in most leagues I think that'll be the case in super flex leagues Jameis was the prize Kate Otten also arriving on Mike's roster yeah uh Kate Otten's on the block everybody <laughs> Jason overspent on Troy Franklin not a surprise no nope. <laughs> <laughs> impossible <laughs> impossible i did not overspend on franklin i acquired Troy. Hey, franklin. wait we gave you that button no oh, yeah baby he spent oh, four no. times four times the amount of the next highest bid but um not enough you know the trade the trade offers today or i'm sorry the nfl trades today will have implications too as i see juju Sh smith schuster hitting the waiver wire in our league of record as well so I mean, it's always good to get a lay of the land and see what's going on. I, I do want to share that you know I did not compete in today's festivities. My team is too good to need players from the waiver wire. Oh, congratulations! Uh, and also have very little fab. But I was looking to acquire more fab. You should have no fab. Well, you, you should have zero. Fab. You know that's what I was going to get into. So yesterday I left work a little early. I had to, I had to to fill. Uh, yes. I had to fill in the gap. Uh, one of my kids was at an orthodontist and they, they, uh, they pulled that we're starting your appointment an hour and a half after you arrived. Oh, that is nasty. What's the point of appointments? Um, they were very apologetic. Good. But my daughter was getting braces on and my wife was stuck at the orthodontist and my son needed to be picked up. You know, there's a lot going on. Very busy time. You know, I'm a responsible father. Let me go over to Deucer's Alley over here. The man in the hat hidden behind his own shame. And so I'm driving around. I mean, not I'm, me. I, I am a no, not not you today. <laughs> it's, it's the Falcon. The but Falcon. That, that's pride, not shame. Um so so I'm driving around and I had put a little note out into our league of record that I you know, I, I was just trying to pick up some fab. It was like if anybody wants Michael Wilson, any fab offer will do. And I get a sweet offer. I, I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, this guy is hitting the waiver wire. I'm shocked. And I got an offer, Michael Wilson, for five dollars a fab. They smashed accept. Smash accept. I wanted that five fab. Little did I realize. <laughs> Keep in mind, Andy had five dollars a fab at the Total. time. That's so all th I have left. Was, this was gonna double his fab. That's why this, you needed fab. This is why I needed fab. Little did I realize that when I smashed accept driving, being a responsible dad, picking up my son. I don't Being got time to focus while on looking at trades and driving. Yeah, that's a hard. Uh... Okay, technically I was parked. Okay, I was in the line. All right. Okay, all right. Okay. Drive line is acceptable. I was in the drive Phone line. Work. Yeah. Yeah. You trade, but don't trade in drive line is what I'm learning because the offer that the Falcon Falcon hadn't ever sent me an offer in in sleeper ever. I had to do the accept. You know how when someone first sends you a deal to trade with you, they're like, "Do you accept this message?" So he, this is his debut. Yeah, it's a collect call. He had sent me. Michael Wilson and my five dollars for nothing. <laughs> I can't even believe Sleeper allows you to put that in the system, but they do. <laughs> so I paid five dollars of Fab to send Michael Wilson. You were one of those teams that were paying for someone to take this player yes. off my roster. And so um, a lot of leagues would say that's on you. A yeah, lot, not a lot this one. 
You know, who's the commissioner of our league? I am. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I remember years ago, uh, we talked about it on this show. It was our listener league. I made a trade for D. Johnson. And I got Duke Johnson instead of David Johnson. <laughs> and I took that on the chin. I said, that's on me. I should have looked at the trade better, and I kept it. I didn't reverse Why, Abby, is that your actual position on this thing? Because I assumed it wasn't. Uh, no. No, it wasn't. I, I okay. love giving you grief about it, but you saw it. You know, immediately we're, uh, the whole league is laughing at you. And oh, you're like, my that gosh. Was a it mistake. was, it it was, was a, very funny. It was a clear mistake. It was a great laugh. But, like, pe people, if this happens in your league, because I, I know that there are some people out there listening that's like, no. Andy should not be allowed to undo that. Yes, he should. It's like, like let let accidents be undone. If someone drops a player, I saw someone uh, tweet this out. They they had a player hit waivers. They dropped them, but they don't have any league rules allowing you to undo it. Here's your league rule. I'm telling you, this is your league rule. If you have a league, if it happens, if an accident happens, and immediately, I'm not talking like the next day or eight hours later, but like when the accident happens, someone goes, "Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do this thing." undo it this is f like come on now i don't know al over there is saying that it's just my fault i didn't pay attention and and i guess that's true it is true but i i don't actually think it should have stood oh it was fun it was a great it was, it was so, so i want to know though uh before we get the show started it's it's jam-packed but falcon what what demented spirit <laughs> conjured up this offer in the afternoon i had just left like what did you was this strategic? Like, this will be a real – like, I know I pay you to work here, but we, you you no. were doing something else? No, I was just on the bathroom and – Of course. <laughs> of course. I, I was like, this would be kind of funny. It's where he does oh his best. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you – look, you said any fab. Negative. Right. No, negative I – Negative fab is that's true. any fab. There is just that – what entertained me the most was the thought that he was sitting there thinking, this will be funny. Like, I'll be able to do this, and he'll probably click accept. And he was right. Um, <laughs> good yeah, work, Papa Falcon. Josh said regret is not reversible. Accidents are. That's right. That's a good way to put it. All right. Congratulations to – can you read the name of the Mega Bowl leader for me? It is – let me get back to the top. N -E that is Nels8912. That's the current leader in our Mega Bowl out of 20,000 participants. I'm having a pretty good Mega Bowl year. I don't know about you guys. I'm sitting at 11 and 3. Ooh, okay, very nice. Uh, Lamar Jackson, thank you. Thank you very much. Marvin Harrison, no thank you to you. Yay. But uh, congrats uh, to Nels, who's leading the Mega Bowl. Yeah, has the Falcon fallen all the way out of contention? Um, I still have a lot of points. My record's just not as good. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what else do we got going on? We got some hungry for more. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Some interesting names on today's segment. I will start with a player that uh, probably categorizes as starving for more over the last several years. I, I uh, Javante Williams. Yeah. Yep. What I saw for the first time in the Sean Payton era this past week was the plan coming to fruition. Sean Payton has been a historically great coach when it comes to running the football and letting that establish the offense and putting up points. And I recognize that this was a bit of, you know, that New Orleans did not play well. Their defense is not playing well. But. 17 opportunities for Javante. He looked explosive for the first time in two years. And if the plan can be executed by Sean Payton, it seems like it's going to be Javante. I mean, Jaleel McLaughlin has shown his limitations this year. He's not on the field a lot. Estime has fumbled multiple times. Javante looks good. And this week, you could have a real back-to-back -back big time performance. In fact, I think Mike, who is who had a slow start in League of Record due to injuries, I think he is percolating with optimism and hope. Oh, I'm, because I'm feeling a lot better. Because he's made some moves. I mean, the fab spins today tell me this is a man hungry for more wins, and Javante may be a key part of that. Yeah, so the Dynasty podcast on the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty show came out today, and every week on that episode. 
we um we do a deep dive on three different a, a deep film dive on three different players from a dynasty perspective. I mine was Javante Williams. I uh, went back and I watched every snap from this last week, and then I wanted to see more. So I watched every snap from the week before, the week before that, the week before that. I looked at the last month of Javante Williams to kind of see is he improving? Is his explosiveness coming uh, home? He he's got a little bit more broken tackle rate, but certainly. Nowhere near the 2021 pre-injury Javante, you know, broke a tackle rate that he that he had. My takeaway was this. Yeah, I'm curious about this. He is an average NFL running back. I didn't see anything that was special. He didn't break a bunch of one-on-one -on -one tackles, but he will 100% get what is blocked for him. And the offensive line and the system is starting to come together. Mike McGlinchey, their right tackle, who is their highest paid player, he came back from injury and dominated. It made their right guard so much better. Their right guard sucked the previous three games. And then all of a sudden, you see the right side of the line, which they are running to, I believe, the second most in the NFL for just cause, opening up holes. And when you do that, Javante, is, he, he's a big, strong back, so he can get that head of steam and go pick up 8 to 12 yards on a single carry. We saw that a couple times. So yeah, this week against Carolina, mm -hmm. they're gonna be opening up some holes. Oh yes. So um, I I'm think excited. it'll be a meal. It'll I, be a nice meal. The way that I view Javante is a solid RB two going forward. He should get the opportunities, seventeen opportunities this last week. But he is not. He did not strike me as like special and healthy and like, oh, he's back, baby. It was like he's gonna be a good matchup play, and hopefully the offense. It's a young, young offense. You know, you've got three rookies uh, at, at skill position players out there almost the majority of snaps and so one of which being your quarterback they should get better as the season goes along but bad matchups will be tough for him all right uh so Javante is my my entry to hungry for more Mike who do you have I got Cedric Tillman we talked about him a, a, a decent amount yesterday on the waiver show Cleveland Browns second year wide receiver he was a third round pick just a couple years ago and he in that draft class it was he was like the only prototypical outside wide receiver he's 6'3 215 so this this is a bigger guy the the rookie year was it was bad like it was just it was bad the raw production was bad the peripherals were bad but the Cleveland Browns passing game has just I mean aside from the end of last year has been very stagnant then this week after the trade of Amari Cooper 12 targets, 8 for 81, 82% of the snaps. He went right into a, a featured role for Cleveland. Three targets early in the first quarter. He was involved you know, in the intermediate area of the field. We'd love to see that. Two end zone targets. They just didn't come through. And the, the matchup now against Baltimore where people just – they have to throw on Baltimore. This is the, because Baltimore is going to put up so many points on you. And then the big news, had yes. you not seen it, Jameis Winston is now the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. It, um, did you hear the the explanation? Uh, yes. I I saw. They it basically was, said it was a game. Ahead. It was a game strategic, game script type of decision to make DTR. <laughs> That's me winking to everybody. put him in that position. I <laughs> take it for what you will. That's big news, Winston. And there's also there's like full Cleveland reset news going on right now which involves the trading of David Njoku. There are three teams. Oh, I hadn't heard that one yet. There are three teams. Don't that have, do it. Three teams that have inquired. No, 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 no. We need Njoku. <laughs> Including the Chargers. Very, well, okay. <laughs> All very right. interesting. And look, I, I didn't know Jason's where he... <laughs> stream of consciousness to the, the progression of the news is very fun. Yeah, I mean, if, if Will Disley's well, out well, there well. getting 11 targets, and yeah, okay. I am not saying, and I don't think we are saying, that Jameis Winston is the savior of the universe for He's, the Cleveland Browns. No. But Watson had been horrifically bad, like historically bad these last few years. So to me, Jameis has to be an upgrade. And I'm, and as as long and and Jameis does crazy stuff. Like he throws <laughs> pick sixes all the time. Like I mean, we've seen him. You know, he just he'll get out there. He's he's he has, like Andy Dalton. He has the gunslinger That's mentality. What it is. Yeah. And that means some bad things will happen for the Cleveland Browns, but some really good things will happen to for fantasy for on the offensive side of the ball, which translates then into fantasy for us. Let me give you the three teams rumored to be connected with David Njoku as right. of fifteen hours ago. Okay, the Chargers. I mean, you, you can make more yes, that, sounds in whee! association with the right. the teams, the Colts. No, 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 no. Barf. 
And Unless the, Flacco's there. And yeah. then the Broncos. No, those are the three teams. I, I think that would I think that would be great for the Broncos. A brilliant move. This is a team that has or a system. Obviously, Jimmy Graham in the past they know how to use the tight end. Uh, uh, Greg Dulcich hasn't the, gotten it done. I think their Troutman. schedule is very favorable too. Yeah, so I mean that that would be good, but that would not be that would be a downgrade for Najoku. Right now, Najoku is the most important target on his offense. Yes, and, and uh, to to bring it back to Tillman. Opportunity should be there, and passing yardage above a, above 200 is the kind of framework that we're looking for and hoping for. Cleveland's recipe the rest of this year, though, is play some defense and get lucky. Yeah, Cleveland is the only team that has not scored 20 points in a game this season. Which I'm guessing that goes away this week. Denver Broncos, according to our strength of schedule tool, where it is schedule adjusted, the seventh best for tight ends moving forward. Is there a more for the Bron? That's the Broncos. Con is there a more contrasting mood change at the quarterback position than the transition from Deshaun Watson to Jameis Winston? Isn't that the greatest contrast you could ever have? <laughs> it, yeah. It, yeah like, you're going like, from someone who... Like, whose party do you want to go to? Right. Look, there's <laughs> what we have is hope. We have actual hope that the pass catchers and the offense for the Browns could... Score more than 20 points. All right, Jason. You've got a former Cleveland Brown as you're hungry for more. Yeah, and a uh, a, a great player who is getting all it the work. is the, the utilization is blowing my mind. Troy Frank. No. <laughs> uh, it's Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt. The utilization is blowing your mind. You're talking about two weeks, 28 opportunities, 24 opportunities, 52 opportunities. That's the most in the NFL. Joel Embiid would never. Back-to-back <laughs> -back games. 38% uh, of Kansas City's total rush attempts and targets have gone to Kareem Hunt. Now, if you're like, 38%, is that good? Is that bad? Over the last two weeks, which are the two weeks that Kareem Hunt has had a job in the NFL, that's second behind only Brees Hall. So this is an offense that will get the job done at least. They're going to be up in most games. They're undefeated right now. Kareem Hunt's looked good, man. He's looked good running the ball. I know he's 29 years old. He's not the explosive rookie he was when he came to the Chiefs, but he is kind of a bell cow player here. I mean, they, yes, he they still have P. Ryan involved in some of the passing work, and they'll, they'll, you know they'll bring people in, but he is uh, a really important fantasy asset. Is, you remember Carson Steele? Oh, I that sure was, that, do. That was this year. I traded for him, <laughs> and then that Kareem like a, Hunt got that was signed. a month ago. Yeah, Kareem Hunt got signed, and he said, hey, can you go get me a coffee, Steele? Yeah. And Steele said, yes, sir, Mr. Hunt. <laughs> and don't come back. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm hungry for more Kareem Hunt. I have picked him up at a couple places, and it has been a delightful. It's funny because your, your dynasty team, due to injuries and underperformance, had been really teetering on a disappointing start to the year, and it feels like over the last two weeks, Kareem Hunt has been the linchpin of keeping you as a top-tier yeah, you know it's been. Yeah, thank you, Kareem. Just to, I need a couple more weeks out of you. Let me get these guys back. It's what makes Dynasty League so wild. Is like so much conversation ends up around the top three or four or five round type of picks, but then the like linchpins of championship teams oftentimes are Jared you know, Patterson. <laughs> yeah, Jared Patterson. Or, or like I, I had Raheem Mostert three years ago when he was considered dead. Raheem Mostert's been like a fundamental part of my team for two years. Like, when you have players that come out of the woodwork, like if Kareem Hunt the rest of the season is this Kareem Hunt, which it seems possible. Now, Pacheco, we did get some optimistic uh, tweeting, but whether he's back for the playoffs, you know, that's more the conversation. Some of the old guys still matter in fantasy football, believe it or not, and, and even in dynasty leagues. And we, uh, Mike was a little uh, skeptical. We were talking about this the other day. Mike was a little skeptical when I drafted. This was like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. This was like five or six years ago. Well, uh, Derek Henry, yeah. because he was an old, he was like, ah, he's he's going to be, you know, coming he's up. Older, on, you used a really, it was like the, your second round pick in a startup for a running back who's already like near the age yeah. cliff. And there's some guys, champ, 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 champ. Some, some guys are true outliers. All right. That was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats, where you can get the best deals on game day food all season long. Uber Eats, the official on-demand delivery partner of the NFL. You can order now. Oftentimes, the quantity we order, determined by how the games go that day. <laughs> tell you that. All right, let's take a break, get into the news. Just 
Let's check Inducer's Alley real quick. Oh, okay. You're still here. Oh. The Falcon's still here. I'm proud of him. That was a good gag. Maybe he's adjusting his coffee schedule. Hold it. Hold <laughs> it. Squeeze. <laughs> Clench. Squeeze tight. Stay in the News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Jason wasn't done with the poop No, jokes he wasn't yet. done with the, the joke. Yeah, you doing man. okay, Falcon? Yeah, I actually did adjust my coffee schedule. So oh, fantastic. Look great. at you putting work first. <laughs> Incredible. He, he adjusted it to not drinking it. Yeah. Yep. Anymore. Wake up a bit earlier, brother. Um, all right. The big news this morning, although there is more than one story, the Chiefs who had been rumored around Cooper Cup or adding a wide receiver after the Juju Smith-Schuster injury news, after the Marquise Brown injury news, after the Rashad, uh, Rashi Rice injury news. They have acquired DeAndre Hopkins, veteran wide receiver from the Titans, who escapes the clutches of Will Levis and arrives uh, to a quarterback with more interceptions. Um, the Titans get a fifth-round draft pick. <laughs> Is that real? Oh, uh, yeah. No, he has more than Will yeah. Levis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Levis has missed some games. Yeah, yeah. Levis, Levis is uh, he's an equal opportunity turnover guy. He'll he'll do the fumbles too. Right. So more turnovers, just fewer. Picks. So okay. DeAndre Hopkins arrives with the Chiefs. I put a tweet out this morning immediately upon the news, asking the question: Rest of season, DeAndre Hopkins is the wide receiver blank. I had a number. I am curious what your number would be. I don't know if you want me to share it first. Uh, I'll write mine down. Mike, you 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 yeah, got I'm it in your thinking head. About it, I will. He, he is just an initial reaction. Yeah. This is not like please. This is not like right, a guarantee. Right, right, right. We don't know. He 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 was dealing with some injury. Um, I, I'll tell you the number. Then you guys tell me what you're thinking. Okay. I, my number was sixteen. Okay. okay. Jason, your number twenty. Twenty. Why does Mike twenty? Twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. So there's your range. Initial reaction range when you because because. We already saw this last week. Our leagues were filled with trades that included Devontae Adams and Amari Cooper because people with news, it's exciting. Like if I had Devon, if I had DeAndre Hopkins, I would be trying to trade him on the news of being with Patrick while Mahomes. While we were sitting here, literally while you were asking that question, I get a sleeper alert that DeAndre Hopkins in our Dynasty League has been added to the trade block. <laughs> like, of course. I mean, that's what you should Very do. Nice. If you've got Hopkins, if people want to trade high and hot for him thinking he's going to be Rushy Rice – then, then trade him at that value because, again, we talk about this a lot. If you're trading on hype, if you're trading on value, then let's say he hits. Well, presumably you received back something that was worthy of that. But if he doesn't hit, you received something back that was worthy of more. So um, I would I would always he trade He just back. hit the trading block in, in League of Record. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. So I guess I'm the most bullish of that situation. I just see the need as desperate. I mean, last week, Noah Gray outperformed Travis Kelsey in that offense. Um, you don't have – like you, we can all kind of commentate on Patrick Mahomes' inability to put up fantasy points. I don't know if anybody could with this current receiving group, and Xavier Worthy was not going to be somebody they can lean on. Like Worthy and McCall Hardman – they work great when you're putting the game plan together and creating cool goal line plays, like their gadgetry. You know what I mean? They're not the main tool in the tool belt. Hopkins is a sure-handed, route-running, reliable possession receiver at this stage of his career. I think you're going to have six for 60 in the can. If he gets in the end zone, you're happy. And I think you will every other week. I, I think you're probably not far off there. This version of Hopkins is he's slower. He doesn't separate as much. He's not explosive. You're not going to get an 80-yard touchdown. But if you compare this version of DeAndre Hopkins to current version, or at least two weeks ago version, of Juju Smith-Schuster, Hopkins is way better. He, he looks better in his routes and his fluidity. Uh, his hands are, are awesome. So Juju has proven in this offense that once you're acclimated, uh, Juju knew this offense. And so that's something that is w worth paying attention to. They brought Juju back because he was already part of this system, this offense for for you know an, an entire year. Same with Kareem Hunt. This is new for Hopkins. So he's going to take a little bit more time to get plugged into the system. However, he is better than Juju. So I do think in a couple weeks you're going to have a wide receiver too going forward. The Saints surprised everybody by – not trading Alvin Kamara, but extending him. A two-year, 
24.5 extension. It puts him under contract through 2026. If you remember, because this was the first thing I thought of when I saw the news. Well, first thing I thought was, oh. But the second thing I thought was, this was a player who chose not to hold out in the preseason and camp, and yet it was rumored that he would. Because he wanted an adjustment to his contract. I don't know if this is the team kind of completing the sentence there where like he in good faith showed up. And so the team in good faith continued to navigate the cap and put him on the team. I am a little bit surprised that this is the move. Uh, so the Saints, had, uh, what a wild franchise. I, If you want <laughs> to know how little you and me, all of us, understand about the salary cap, just look at the, the the New Orleans Saints, who have no money and always give their guys a ton of money, but that's years down the road. They kick the can down the road so much it's unfathomable. Um, it, it you know they've got zero percent APR on so, they're loading these credit cards. <laughs> I I I don't know. I I think they're still paying for Drew Brees for like twelve more years. Um, so this is a cap move for them that they believe is smart. And for about eight years, we've said it's going to come calling, and someday it will. But as the cap keeps increasing the next year and the next year and the next year, they're always okay enough to put together a solid roster. And so maybe they'll be fine forever. They have been for long enough. But it's just wild, man. I can't believe that a team that is so cap-strapped is like, hey, you want you want some more money? It's very, running, uh, very want, weird. Hey, old running back, you want some more money? I think that the Giants might have been well advised to follow this principle with Saquon Barkley in the offseason, perhaps kicking some cans down the road and paying him an extra $2 million to keep him on the team. But Kamara, not heading out the door. Saquon and neighbors with that defense, yeah, they, they could actually they be were a competitive like, team. They were like a Saquon away <laughs> if they could just pick one up. Uh, Jameis Winston, we talked about it. He's going to start. We also got word that the Browns are going to let Ken Dorsey start calling all offensive plays moving forward. They were 13th in pass rate last year. Uh, Buffalo was with Ken Dorsey calling plays. That is part of his calling card. That only helps the equation with Jameis Winston. Listen to this, boys. Tua Tungavailoa expected to practice in full today. He's playing okay. against the Cardinals. That That is the expectation. I think all of us, if you look at the – the betting lines like right now unless there's a setback Tua will start this week which is glorious news for everyone your Waddle your Hill HN Mostert and I and hope Tua, for, and I hope for him yes too. Absolutely. I really do it's it's one of those things where you live your whole life with the joy of playing the game you love and you're 26 well how old is he I don't know. Well, if you're no concerned, if you – yeah, no one knows. His mom is unsure. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, 26.6. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tua's health should come first for sure. I know Mike McDaniel has talked about like that coming first. And that's why they're going to start him against the Arizona Cardinals because they're like, where should – what team should, could we hand select How many to make sure he does not – It's like a preseason game. Right. The Cardinals sacked Justin Herbert a handful of times last they, week. They, their defense was wildly – it was the black, okay, it was the black jerseys. Week. They were feeling... Yeah, it, it made no sense. You couldn't run on them last week. Their mm -hmm. pass rush was coming despite no personnel to do it. Uh, so it's mostly a joke. Maybe they're figuring something out with a defensive head coach, but I doubt it. I think it's probably Monday night football at home. Big, rare opportunity. Human beings get yeah. up for that. And their, uh, Dennis Gardek tore his, uh, his ACL, the linebacker that was playing well for the Cardinals. Uh, just another injury there, although Darius Robinson should be coming back on the defensive line soon. Mike Evans expected to be out until after the team's week 11 bye. They did not put him on IR. Because of that bye week, I think. I think they're looking at this like a four-week injury, but yes. because their bye week is in there, he might only miss three games. Do you, do you feel confident that he'll be back after the bye? And yeah. do you feel confident that – I mean, when you take Godwin off the table for the remainder of the season, are we missing an – like, is Mike Evans – a player you'd go acquire today if you're a contending team, knowing that, look, your playoffs are not till 15 to 17. I mean, that is a no, long ways from it's, now. It's I'm, a massive amount and of Baker's, risk. And Baker's a tremendous – he's having a tremendous season where Evans will be the primary target when they're competing in this division. At you're the end you're the not going to acquire Mike Evans for nothing, so it's going to cost your team something. 
and then you don't get anything for a month in the hopes that when he comes back, he doesn't re-aggravate. I, I'm not taking that risk now. If you're telling me three weeks from now, you know, when, when he's on by, if and you're a contending team, if you want to try to take that risk then, yeah, well, sure. Well, I think the price is lower now. Oh, well, of course. And he course, has to but, go on to IR. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 if you've got an IR spot and it costs you nothing, well, fine. But if you've got to give up something and, and you're not going to get the player for a month, that's a real tough pill to swallow. And, yes, it, during the week – Fantasy football wise, you'll be able to put him on your IR, but I imagine he's going to be one of those players where it's Wednesday rolls around and it's like, oh, he's questionable, so you're going to have to uh, like deal with that. Like this, he won't just be marked out for four straight weeks. All right, Dan Quinn said uh, Jaden Daniels is getting close to being back on the practice field, so Good. we could get our Sunday night football. The News on Debo Samuel, released from the hospital, dealing with pneumonia. We'll keep you updated on his status for this weekend. Andy Dalton was involved in a car accident, yeah. but was at the team facility. Nobody was, um, from what I read, nobody in the accident was taken to uh, the hospital. Aaron Rodgers dealing with a hamstring injury in addition to previous ankle and knee injuries. Uh, is this a man setting up his um, excuse <laughs> Rolodex? I mean, what is... <laughs> Uh, maybe I, I believe they're real. I mean, he's just old. We've seen his legs getting twisted and 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 battered in these games. So I'm I'm sure they're they're real. I I think the news here is he's not healthy, and so it's you know if you're trying to rely on him, oh he's got you know Devonte Adams, Garrett Wilson, and Brees Hall. Maybe I want to uh, start him. You got to be worried about the the injury risk that he's carrying right now. I was looking quite extensively yesterday at our strength of schedule tool which at this point you know it's kind of interesting to look at it broken down by playoff weeks remaining schedule um you know Aaron Rodgers Devontae Adams can they get on the same page can this be a meaningful end of the season maybe I think so I think I, I think they will get on the same page and it will be meaningful I would say yes so fantasy meaningful yeah that's what I mean I don't care about football. I mean, like, wins and loss. I don't care if the Jets win. <laughs> yeah. For what? Who cares? I want Jameis Winston out there throwing pick sixes, so he's got to get right back on the field and throw touchdowns. The, the Rams have opened up the 21-day window for wide receiver Puka Nakua. <laughs> yeah. Take it easy. I just I – need, I need him so bad. I think you might have attached too much of your future to, I, to Puka Nakua. I'm going to go ahead and say I know I did because <laughs> – um, I, I, you know, I'm, I, we're in nine leagues, probably like six that we, you know, really care about. And in the, those six, I got him in four. And so I've had him in none. And it's well, I, sucked. Similarly, I, I am also overexposed to Cooper Cup, who should be back this week on Thursday night. But many teams have inquired about trading for Cooper Cup. You can take the Chiefs off the board there. Uh, uh, they had inquired, they didn't want to take on the money that the Rams wanted them to take on. But yeah, Cooper the, Cup could get sent out of town. We've got rumors about Darnold and Matthew Stafford being traded for one another. That's the scary one for me with Puka coming back. If 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 the Darnold uh, that Stafford is scary. swap was made, that would be tough. Uh, but those are just rumors right now. And and it, to, to be more specific on the Cooper Cup Kansas City, it looked like the Rams were willing to pay the contract if the Chiefs were wanting to, willing to give up a second. Yeah, high pick. But they were able to give up only a fifth to get Hopkins, who didn't have a big contract. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. To learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We have a special segment today. Second Half Sleepers. What was the expression you used yesterday, Jason, when I told you who my second half sleeper might be on the show? Oh, my! I said, I just want you to know. You don't have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to pick him. Is that a similar feeling that you have, Mike, when you've seen who I put in here? Hey, the news today was really helpful. This, we, we live in America, the land of freedom. You are free to do what you want. Are you, are you moving forward with this? Yeah. I'm going to... Unobtainium underpants. Yeah, hold yeah. on to you your need, butts. You I, gave I, me the highest grade. I can't have stronger underpants for you i feel like i would like mike and i to leave the room <laughs> and you could you, <laughs> can, we, can we blur out the faces of the innocent right just like you don't want to be even peripherally associated with this idea i don't 
think it's necessary. Can I just, can but I, you might be right. Can I just tell you? The process. 17 targets over the last two weeks for this player. And he happens to be the teammate of DeAndre Hopkins who has been shipped out of town. Okay. Listen. Put them underpants on and talk, brother. I'm not going to say the name. Thank what I'm going to do you. is I'm going to tell you all of the facts. Okay. 17 targets over the last two weeks. Kind of. The number one schedule for wide receivers yes. for the rest of this season. That I part mean, is true. From weeks 11 through 18, so your, your stretch run, Minnesota, Houston, Washington, Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Jacksonville, Houston. Every one of those teams gives up more points to the wide receiver position than the average, some of them by a lot. Jacksonville two times in that stretch. So the number one schedule, not just for wide receivers, but for whomever his quarterback is, the targets will be there. Will he catch them? Will they be in the – Will, will they, they be, be catchable, catchable is the question. This is a second-half sleepers. To me, this is a monumental downgrade from, the, from what this player was associated with to start the year. Look, I have regrets, but my second-half sleeper is Calvin Ridley. Oh, you said you weren't going to say the name. Well, until the, you I wanted until to lay I, out the case. Yeah, you don't. I would have just said wide receiver one for the Titans. Sure. Maybe that'll be easier for people to make that decision. There are plenty of times. 30%, 24% target share over the last two weeks. There are going to be games. There are plenty of times in fantasy football where the names betray you in both directions, where because of a name, uh, like for, Not what you for said instance, about Hopkins. Hopkins so far this year has had one reasonable game everything else has been like one point zero points four points I mean the whole season I think he had negative yards last week yeah and so I went uh, based on the news this morning and I was like oh okay waivers haven't gone through let me go see and I checked the sleeper has if you don't know about this because I didn't know about it until this year you can click on a player in sleeper and there's a little banner that says check his availability in other leagues and you can click that and you can look at all the leagues you're in and see if he's on any of the waivers he was on Just none of the waivers. He should have been on all of the waivers. Check the waivers for Calvin Ridley. Uh, through the first seven weeks last year, these were players that were outside the top 36. Garrett Wilson, DJ Moore, Chris Godwin, Debo Samuel, Rashi Rice, DK Metcalf, Jaden Reed, um, T. Higgins, Amon Ross St. Brown back in 2021. Uh, most of those names are from this year. I was reading some from 2022. Like big names – and big performances, they do come later on. All of those names that I read were like top 15 guys the back half of the year. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that the, everything laid out on the table is positive for the opportunity. And now DeAndre Hopkins is not even there to compete. Like, you have to play four quarters of football. You're playing teams where the quarterback and the wide receiver literally have the best schedule. I, I don't know what else to tell you. That's what we do here is we tell you all the numbers that tell you why something should work, and if it doesn't work beyond that, blame Andy. Blame me, not Jason Mike. I definitely blame the Falcons. But you will get the credit if it comes to I doubt push. that. I, but <laughs> looking at, you know, preparing for this episode. Oh, I saw it. I saw I saw the quarterback schedule. I saw the, the wide did? receiver schedule. You saw the opportunity. Yeah. You could have done this, Mike. And I went, no, thank you. Yeah. Um, he it's, said, not today, it's, Satan. You look, it's it makes so much sense. It just it comes down to can they actually take advantage of the schedule that is placed before them, and that's where the risk comes in. This is, I mean, in terms of getting Calvin Ridley on your team, that's probably a low risk propagation of like that. that what's it going to take to get Calvin Ridley at this point? A bench player who. You're like, hey, you want this? Uh, have you want your insurance running back? You're like, I'll you just give me Calvin Ridley. Like that, you can get him so cheap. So I don't think you even have to go play him right now. Just put him there and see if something materializes over the next handful of weeks. Yeah, the, he's played th what four games? Three games with Will Levis, one with Mason Rudolph. I think we're getting another one Are with getting, Mason. I think we're getting another Mason game this week, uh, where. A difficult part for Calvin Ridley this is, is probably is, dumb to have brought up again. <laughs> I'm trying to help you, man. Um, it might 
and it could be even slower because like if if it's Mason Rudolph uh this week against Detroit, I'm not interested. And then you have the two the two actual tough England games remaining, week. the Patriots and then the Chargers. So it could be a slower start. This is a this is really a week eleven through championship week type of a by play. The, and by the way, eleven, twelve, and fourteen are major bye weeks. I, I will say so this. So if you need a bye week fill in, that's right, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Second half sleeper. If Calvin Ridley were on our waivers, and this is just true, and, and it's not true for every team. Your team's chugging along, you're great. Just don't don't worry about this. You know, just be happy and keep your team intact. But like for for teams that are struggling with injuries, if Calvin Ridley were on waivers, I would have gone hard after him in hopes that he can develop that rapport, especially with Hopkins gone. There is a place for him to be important for certain fantasy managers. And I think about half of every league out there, Calvin Ridley will be important for them. I mean, this is really just setting expectations right. You've got a guy who's going to get a lot of targets as the one with an easy schedule. It's yep, not like Will it. Levis that's is it. not an NFL quarterback uh, by contract. Yes. Okay. Technically speaking. He yeah. does have an NFL contract. All right, can we – let's move <laughs> yeah. forward. Mike, why don't you uh, hop in? All right. Uh that's a high pressure situation here, uh, but I'm going to go. High pressure makes diamonds, brother. It does, and hopefully we get another one this year. I'm going with wide receiver, uh, the wide receiver from the Pittsburgh Steelers, George Pickens. Got the only one. It, well, I don't really care about the the other guys there. Uh, things have he's look he's not a sleeper in the in the sense of people don't know who he is, but his value while. It's now the market value is up for George Pickens based off of last week. I think there's a chance that we go even higher here over the second half. The Pittsburgh Steelers have the fifth easiest remaining wide receiver schedule. Now that comes, th this one does have a couple caveats of week eight here against the Giants. That the Giants are actually uh, negative four points above expectation, so I guess below expectation for wide receivers, and then the bye week. That part is unfortunate here for George Pickens and championship week is the Chiefs. But between then, you have this really strong stretch. Like I said, the fifth easiest remaining wide receiver schedule combined with the hardest schedule remaining for fantasy running backs. And if you ask about Jalen Warren, that's part of why I like Warren of because he actually catches passes on like Najee where he's just going to be running into stack boxes and things. But combined... Easy schedule for wide receiver, hard schedule for running back, plus the change into uh, Russell Wilson for George Pickens. I think that we have a not just a good play. You have like some really, really elite potential here moving forward. He's seen 51% of the team's air yards. That's a number that only A.J. Brown and Malik Neighbors are seeing. And those air yards, you saw it last week. Those things went through the roof compared to what we've been getting for, for Justin Fields. Or, uh, when he was the quarterback, targeted on 29% of his routes. Like, that's a top 10 type of a number. Fourth among all wide receivers in expected fantasy points per route run. And again, the change to Russell Wilson, while I was questioning it uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin looks like he was correct again. And that was a hard matchup. Like, th that was not an easy game there for Russ to be thrown into in his first game with the Steelers. So, after the bye week, Washington, which we we brought up of our – that's kind of up in the air still. I don't know if they're a good defense or not, but Baltimore, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Philly, Baltimore. Like this is a really, really strong run here, and I expect Pickens to to kick it into turbo mode by week 11. All right. Uh, we, we all see the potential with George Pickens. To see it consistently would be outrageously uh, great. That would be awesome. Um, the only down, the only hardship there is that that means Russell Wilson's just back. You know, he's he's going to play well the rest of season. We've seen it one game. If if he plays the way that he played for the Denver Broncos last year, which is competent for fantasy football, uh, what was it? Cortland Sutton double digit double digit touchdowns. touchdowns. Last year. Like, it was for the Denver Broncos as a whole last year. Just everything felt terrible. But the play of Russell Wilson was competent. I, that's, I can't give him a higher compliment than that. But they, they it did. was it was enough that if you have a star wide receiver, 
you're going to get fantasy production. They were winning games down the stretch second half of last year, but because of his contract guarantees, yeah. they chose to bench him so that they didn't have to pay out the rest of that contract in, in a different fashion. Um, sometimes the second half <laughs> of the year sleepers. Lightning strikes twice. Sometimes lightning strikes twice. Sometimes it's easy. And I, I believe this is, I think this is easy. I think this is going to happen just like it happened last year. And I think you've convinced me of that. It is Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott has pretty much, uh, he's, he's super disappointed so far this year. Uh, he, he hasn't, you know, he's had three top 12 performances. Okay. But for the most part, it's been uh, suboptimal. If you compare, so both both years, last year and this year, week seven buys. Last year, the six games beforehand versus the, the six games beforehand this year, they're almost the same across the board. Completion percentage in the 60s, 222 passing yards per game last year, 267 this year. Uh, quarterback rating, 88-85. Uh, fantasy points per game last year, 14 uh, a week, 15 a week this year before the buy. They had a, a top 12 difficult passing schedule so far in the, in the six games that Dak played. Now coming out of the bye, this is a team that has the sixth easiest strength of schedule for the quarterback going forward. Last year they had an elite defense. This year they don't. They're going to need to score even more. And if you look at how Dak Prescott plays after the bye in the specific matchups, so over the rest of the season they only have two – "Quote unquote difficult matchups at all the the whole rest of the way as far as fantasy points given up um, when you when you compare for schedule and those two matchups are both the Philadelphia Eagles this year which are technically top five but he's he's used to playing the Eagles last year against the Eagles he had a game of three hundred and seventy four and three and a game of two hundred and seventy one and two those are both fine uh, matchups and you know the you might look and say well. San Francisco out of the bye. That's maybe a more difficult matchup. That's a good defense, generally speaking. But so far this year, they've been giving up more fantasy points over expectation than the average quarterback. And Dak is coming off a bye. Jamie Eisenberg pointed this out on Twitter, how awesome Dak has been after his bye week and seven career games after a bye. Prescott is averaging averaging 28.1 fantasy points. And his worst outing over that entire career is 22.3 points. So, I, I think this is a team that can't run the ball, doesn't have a great defense anymore. Dak, after the bye last year, if you don't remember, if you didn't have him and didn't experience it, also known as you didn't win the championship, <laughs> um, he was on pace after the bye for 5,000 yards and 46 passing touchdowns. Him and CD were awesome. Part of that was because, and we saw this last year, he was on this episode last year because the strength of schedule coming out was like, hey, it's all green. It's green lights, it's wheels up for Dak Prescott. Well, guess what's happening this year? Same exact thing. So I, I think I saw him on waivers in our league of record, which is why Andy's grimacing. You've got CD. You won the championship last year with that CD Dak stack. And I I was like, I am not. I am not letting Andy get him. So I paid one more fab than you had, and you didn't go after him. So I was you you had just why spent up on Caleb. Why don't you give me Dak plus 10 fab for nothing? <laughs> I will. Those trades are hit. They're they're hot right now. <laughs> they're everywhere. They're big time trades. Um, I I think you're right, and you know I guess it's somewhat comforting that I literally couldn't have gotten him. Right. Yes. Until today. So oh, we'll, we'll talk later. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, bonus second half sleeper picks. I'm going to throw T.J. Hawkinson's name out there. He should be returning soon. They've got the third easiest schedule for tight ends, and they could use him. They could use him. Why do I know this? Because Johnny Munt has production in the offense, and he's not TJ Hawkinson. And and we know that TJ Hawkinson passes all the tests all the time, so he's ready to go. He's the second half sleeper for me. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. My my uh, guy to pay attention to is Braylon Allen. The number yes. one rest of season schedule is the Jets. So this is really for, a, for running back. for running yes. backs. This is really a a Brees Hall uh, statement for sure. But obviously, Braylon Allen's out on waivers. And if something happens to Brees Hall, the matchups are so juicy, especially we through the know playoff we get weeks. It done. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure he's rostered. Mike? And I'm, I'm throwing out a defense here. Uh, not that I think that the Cincinnati Bengals defense is an elite by any means, but it's rest of season. They have two bottom half uh, remaining matchups for, for a DST play. And then in the playoffs, like if, if you're looking at who actually has – Good schedules uh, in the playoffs. 
We got the Jaguars. You're going to play the Jags? Got the Colts. You're going to play them? The Cardinals? Like these are not teams that I that I, I I'm going to believe in. You're but, saying just to be the, clear, those three teams have good schedules, but yes. you don't you don't believe in their defense. Right. But the best the the best one on paper right now is the Bengals. You get the Titans, you get Cleveland, and then you maybe you want to pivot away against Denver. I don't uh, know. You're at home week. against Denver in Championship Week. Yeah, it's not so, the end of the but world. But that's what I'm saying. Like it's not. That's the worst. That's the worst one uh, for that three game run here for the Bengals. And and normally we talk about like you want to mix and match, of course. Of be, play the best. Like if you can play against the Cleveland Browns all three weeks at, with your defense, sure, go ahead and do that. But well, and that could the, change now. Yeah, yeah it, that new, definitely new could change. New offensive play caller, new new quarterback. But pay attention to that DST. And before we get into the Thursday night football matchup, I just want to remind people that the rumors are out there. They're just rumors that there could be a potential trade of Sam Darnold for Matthew Stafford. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Why are you reminding people about that? Do you not remember what the Thursday night football game is? Oh, fair. That's pretty interesting. All right, uh, we got to take a break, then we'll hit the Thursday night preview. Thursday night breakdown. I want to see the trade pulled off Wednesday, today, <laughs> <laughs> halftime. Oh my gosh! At halftime, they come out in different jerseys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Minnesota at five and one, taking on the two and four Los Angeles Rams. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Minnesota minus two and a half on the road. Over under is forty eight points. That's the third highest of the week. Mike just did a fist pump because he's happier with this than yeah, last week. Than last week's just. Well, look, uh, the, the Rams should get back Cooper Cup in this game. Some of the rumors around the Darnold Stafford swap. You know, there's a significant age gap between Darnold and Stafford, and the rumor is that, and Jack Settleman was the first one with sources to talk about this, and other other sources have confirmed discussions. Kevin O'Connell and Sean McVay have that connection. They won a Super Bowl together. Matthew Stafford's 36 years old. I believe Sam Darnold's 27. The Rams are interested in a long-term deal with Sam Darnold. And the Rams are looking at resetting yeah, kind of the, the timeline. Uh, Stafford is is like... To put it into fantasy football dynasty terms, he's the guy you pick up because you need a you need to win a title t this year. <laughs> I mean, right. it, it's not necessarily the the future of your franchise, but I don't think any of us would like. If Darnold's legit, that trade makes so much sense for both teams. Well, Darnold is five and one playing in the Sean McVay system right now. Yeah, I mean, and this is and this is why like out. it feels like a a dishonoring thing to Darnold to talk about this trade, but the truth is is. When push comes to shove and you go to the playoffs, you need Stafford. You're not going to do it with Darnold. Yeah, Darnold's not winning a Super Bowl. There's not not this year. Genuinely, the way that the Vikings defense has been playing, their offensive weapons, you put Stafford there. I mean, yeah, O'Connell's won a Super Bowl with Matthew Stafford already. It's it's very very interesting. We don't know what if anything will happen. But for this game this week specifically, you know, Minnesota finally took an L. It was a late loss. It was a great game. It was very fun. It was a late last second field goal, right? It was. He he did not have a great game. Um he was okay. He took sacks, four of them. He threw an interception. He didn't look you know, he looked middle of the pack in that in that ball game that they lost, but the defense is so great and he and he you know, he was fine. In this game specifically, start set decisions. You're always putting Kyron in there. He's been unbelievable. He has 24 touchdowns in his last 18 games. He's as close to betting on a touchdown guarantee as we got since the Christian McCaffrey run. Mm -hmm. Cooper Cup should be back out there. What does that do with the rest of the wide receiver options? It seems like it pushes them into a can't start category. At least that's my impression. But what do you guys think? I I think it's still open because the the like teams have to pass on the Minnesota Vikings. That's just that's where they have ended up, at least so far through the season. The problem is, like, I, I mean, I guess you can maybe go with two two uh, two two Atwell, but it, like I want I want it to be Jordan Whittington, but you had the last year or last week's debacle of 
He's questionable. He's you know he's limited in practice, and then he goes out and doesn't run a single route for There's, the whole game. I think he had like nine blocking snaps. And it was injury related. And but there's four names there. Yeah, Tyler, like Tyler Johnson, Johnson was the guy was, who stepped up. Yeah. Seven targets, right. four Be for fifty seven. Because Demar Whittington didn't play. And Demarcus and Whittington and Tutu. Those are against I, this defense. Yeah, I'm gonna i I'm gonna start Cooper Cup. He, okay. He's going to be active. He's going to be in my lineup. This is a – I mean, the, right now on the course of the season, the Vikings' defense has been great, but so is their offense. So the other teams have to keep up. You can't run on them, and you might be down. You would expect them to be down in a game that they are, you know, fa you know, ex literally Minnesota is favored. So Cooper Cup's going to need to throw the ball. You can throw on them. They're 30th right now in schedule-adjusted fantasy points given up to the wide receiver position, averaging Minnesota Vikings, averaging 32 fantasy points per game given up. We've seen in the game where Cooper, you know, when Cooper Cup was there and Puka was injured, it's like Cooper Cup's, it felt like at least 50%, if not 75% of the wide receiver targets. He's just, he is their guy. They waited. You know, McVay talked about why he didn't play last week. It wasn't because he wasn't healthy enough to play. It was because he wasn't. Return to performance, not just return to the field. Exactly. So Cooper Cup is like, I mean, I there's no world where I would not start him on any roster. So Kyron and Cooper. I feel like that to me is the end of that it, story. It, it is to me. There's there's enough other tight ends who have peaked their heads up like the Hunter Henrys and now Kate Ottens to where Colby Parkinson is not necessary. Yeah, he's more Colby Jack squat. Nice. Mm, got him. Aaron Jones been limited uh but not worried about it right now. It, you know, quick turnaround from Sunday, he was dealing with an injury. He looked amazing. So he's in your lineup confidently? For, for yes. sure. And then you've got Justin Jefferson. What about Jordan Addison? He has three receptions in every game he's played. That is um, not great. Yeah, we could that's, use a little more volume. That's there. pretty. Uh, that's scary because it's kind of like if you score, you're you're all right. Yeah, and last last week against the Lions, he did he hit the one big play, a fifty yard catch. So I mean, three for sixty six for the type of player that he is. That's not the worst, but I mean, we got to get these. Yeah, you don't know who it is. Targets. Jalen Naylor last week had five targets, four for seventy six. So yeah, Justin right. Jefferson is the one, obviously. Um, I don't think Hawkinson is going to play this week. There just hasn't been enough buzz. I think we'll know. Early there's enough. a chance. There is. There is a chance. Um, my expectation right now is that he starts next week, and if that's the case, I think it's really th this game's pretty simple in the sense that it's Justin Jefferson. Cooper Cup, Kyron Williams, and Aaron Jones. All right, I've, I've got That's the it. I've got the storyline for the game. Awesome. The thing to follow, the thing to be excited about. Uh, Minnesota is playing for Matthew Stafford, right? Because if you don't win this game, then the Rams they're, are they're alive. The Rams are three and four. They're alive. They've got Cooper Cup with Puka on the way, and they're in play. You win this game, the Rams are two and five. You're six and one. You're incentivized to make the move. That now, the irony, of course, is that if you win this game, Sam Darnold probably played good football, but that's more persuasive in your trade offer. Yeah, you want – I mean, if you're this – is the, This is the Matthew Stafford Bowl. This is the Matthew Stafford Bowl. They, Sam Darnold needs to go out and ball out. And what's ironic is that if Sam Darnold wants what's best for his career, he is having a resurgence, a glorious time. I'm sure he is loving being a Minnesota Vikings starting quarterback. But their future is already there in J.J. McCarthy. Yes, that's why and this so, trade makes sense. So if you want a long-term starting deal, Darnold, go play your heart out and show the other team, look, you can sign me to a long-term deal. It's so weird. So wait, he's playing, he's playing for like $100 million. <laughs> yes, <Could> like, legitimately. <laughs> so the, the Vikings need to go out there and look awesome and win this game. And if they do, you might see this trade happen. What a, what a fascinating. That's pretty fun fun thing to watch now if Donald goes out there collapses and they lose all bets are off yeah I mean if that happens uh, you're three and four I mean the, the Cardinals are three and four in the division the 49ers are three and four in the division yeah the Rams will be right in the mix again pretty wild all right that should be a fun Thursday night football game and tomorrow we're going to get into all of our starts of the week all of the matchups we've got the wheel of shame this week and I am telling you now <laughs> you don't <laughs> Want to miss oh. Friday's Wheel of Shame. That's My, great news. Mike has I have no, no idea. idea what's going on. Jason is I have the no shame. idea what's going on. I'm not, I will not be Al, here Friday. Al, you and I know. It's, Would a, you it's advise just a wheel that spins, man. We'll see what happens. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, also, 
uh, breaking news while we were talking. Uh, Brooks just put Sam Darnold on the trade block <laughs> in our dynasty. League. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that'll do it for today's show. Check out jointhefoot.com if you want a custom waiver wire built to your league. You want the lineup optimizer to get you ready for the weekend. All of our premium rankings and more at jointhefoot.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.